Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, for those who have passed away in our community, and for all those suffering due to the pandemic. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Present. Mr. McAndrew? Present. Dr. Rothschild? Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, overtime review for all departments as provided by city controller dated June 2nd, 2021 for the period January to May 2021. 3B, minutes of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority regular meeting held May 5th, 2021. 3C, correspondence sent to DP Director Tom Preamble dated June 3rd, 2021 regarding Leggett's Creek and Leech Creek flooding. 3D, correspondence sent to Mr. Michael Sames, Department of Environmental Protection, dated June 3rd, 2021, regarding Leggett's Creek and Leech Creek flooding. 3E, agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board, public hearing to be held on Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. Thank you, are there any comments on any of the third order items? I just have uh, two comments. The first one is on 3A. I mentioned this during the caucus, but, um, and I've actually mentioned this before, so I would like an explanation by next week on the DPW administration uh, overtime. I have a concern there. We budget it $2,250 uh, in the 2021 budget, and at the end of May so far, uh, $7,446 has been spent. I'd like a breakdown of the overtime numbers by employee in DPW administration and an explanation as to why they're over budget uh, by this amount. It's not a huge amount, um, $7,000, but for what we budget it, you know, they're over by quite a bit. Um, in the past, in looking at the budgets, there was usually little to no money that was ever either budgeted or spent on overtime in DPW administration. So I would like an explanation on that by next week. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention, in third order, there were two letters that were sent last week to DPW Director Preambo regarding Leggett's Creek and Leech Creek flooding, and then there was a uh, letter sent to Mr. Michael Sames from DEP regarding the same issue. Uh, Mr. Sames did respond late this afternoon with quite a few attachments. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go through all of it yet. We'll make sure that those get in third order for next week and then we'll go from there. Anyone else? I just wanna say I agree with uh, President Gahn on you know, taking a look at the DPW overtime. We've been asking for a, for a few months. It looks like a pattern. I don't know if it's just one person or the same, or two people that get this almost the same amount every month. I'd, I'd also like some justification. Anyone else? If not, received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have two quick ones. So I'd like to congratulate the Lady Invaders yesterday um, on the PIWA Class 5A playoff game. They're headed this Thursday to Elizabethtown for a state, in this, uh, the quarterfinals for a state championship. And i also like to congratulate the Prep Cavaliers. Um, they're also heading uh, to the state quarterfinals this Thursday. That is all I have, thank you. Anyone else? I have uh, two announcements. So next week, we will have a public caucus of 545 that will be televised on Channel 19 ECTV with NDC, who uh, runs the city's parking system. So they usually come every quarter to give us an update. They'll be in next week. Uh, the other announcement that I would like to make is that council is going to be accepting letters of interest and resumes for those who might be interested in seeking an appointment to fill um, three vacant, what will be three potentially vacant seats of the zoning board. Um, if you are interested, you have to be a citizen of the United States, a resident of the city for at least one year prior to the appointment, and at least the minimum voting age at the time of the appointment 
um, and you have to reside in the city of Scranton throughout the term of service as a board member. You can send your letter of interest and resume to the office of the city clerk no later than next Friday, June 18th, 2021 at 12 noon by emailing fvoldenberg at scrantonpa.gov or by hand delivery or U.S. mail at the office of the city clerk, municipal building, 340 North Washington Avenue, second floor, uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18503. And this will be advertised in the uh, Scranton Times. So, Mr., I'll just go through the uh, who's up for reappointment and uh, uh, the vacancy. So, Mr. Gattens, is, his term expires on July 1st, 2021. Uh, Mrs. Newcomb, her term expires June 30th, 2021. And Paul Marks, his term expired July 1st, 2023, uh, but he resigned from the zoning board within the last uh, month or so. So we have to uh, fill those three seats. There's also uh, two openings for alternate zoning members. An alternate member of the zoning board fills in for uh, a zoning board member who can't make it to the meeting or get sick or, or something like that. So we really need um, citizens to serve on the zoning board. It's a very, very important position. Um, and you deal with very important matters throughout almost every neighborhood of the city. So if you're interested, uh, please send the letter of interest and resume into us by next Friday, and council uh, will consider, and uh, then we'll make a decision very shortly thereafter. Anyone else with announcements? Okay, Mr. Voldenberg. Fourth order, citizens participation. Thank you. The first speaker is Joan Hodewanitz. that the Scranton Public Library is going to do its second annual family mini golf tournament. It's a fundraiser. On Sunday, June 13th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's $5 for kids and $10 for everyone else and you get to play 18 holes inside the Scranton Public Library in its stacks, in its various rooms. Last time we did it, we even had a spillover to the children's library. It's a tremendous amount of fun. Any of you got munchkins? I'm looking at you, Bill. It'd be a great, it's a great fun day. The kids love it. And it was, it was a great success last time, so please consider attending. All right, with regard to my questions during uh, the June 1st meeting, I noted your letter to DEP requesting permits to clear out the debris in Leach and Leggett's Creeks, documentation on prior work done on those creeks, and a meeting to discuss what can be done to prevent further flooding. I have some questions. Has DEP responded? Have you any information on what it will cost to replace the allegedly undersized Leach Creek pipe? And does the city have the funds to pay for damages from future flooding events? I also noted your letter to DPW requesting a report on work done on Leech and Legged Creeks in the past five years and any plans to mitigate future flooding. Has DPW responded? Has DPW explained the events surrounding the installation of the Leech Creek pipe last October and DEP's subsequent investigation? Next, what is the status of the city's dispute with Lackawanna County's Tax Claim Bureau with regard to the collection of delinquent property taxes? Next. What is the status of the 2020 audit? Specifically, what is the projected completion date? And how long will the city pay Rainey and Rainey to do the audit prep work? Next, has the city made any arrangements to ensure compliance with federal and state COVID-19 fund guidelines? If so, please describe them. And finally, with regard to the overtime expenses through the end of May, 
I see that the city has already spent 57.47% of its overtime budget when it should have spent no more than 41.66%. If that upward trend were to continue for the next seven months, we will exceed the city's overtime budget by 37.94% or a whopping $546,905.10. So let's keep an eye on this particular metric. And I will listen to your answers during fifth order. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tom Coyne. Greetings, members of council. Today, I shall limit my comments to the IT-related issues. Last week, we were informed of Mr. Dealey's move to the IT director. It was questions if he was qualified for that position, and council said it would request his resume. I have not seen that as of this week, but I understand next week he is supposedly coming in. As Mr. Gone provided records of donation discrepancies last week from the Scranton Times, I reviewed Mr. Dealey's resume posted on the Times when he was appointed business administrator. He is listed as a background in manufacturing engineering, private equity, operations management with a degree in mechanical product and production engineering, project management positions for Toyota Motors. He has also advised various investment firms and corp corporations. Though operational management may cross into the, I field, the IT field, the resume is devoid of specific information on information technology, IT security, certifications, continuing education, or IT titles or, specific, or anything specifically relevant to the position he is now in, uh, uh, put in the position for. I respect Mr. Geely's job as business administrator. He is quite qualified for that position, and unless Scranton plans to outsource almost all of its IT, and even then a director who understands the full scope is required to prevent cost overruns and requesting services better learned in-house. For emergency appointments, let me remind everyone we are no longer in an emergency and our retroactive emergency powers are absurd. The emergency window is closed and as such, this is too late for the table. Second, the Avero contract. I see in the introduction of the intent of application forms as council noted last week, but this is not the same as having a presenter appear. You cannot question a form, you cannot ask it for clarity, you cannot target buzzwords that sound good and ask questions. This is why submissions, especially in relation to changing code or contracts, should be introduced in person and the intent explained, not by written document, though as additional support, it is always welcome. Council presented for review, well, council was presented for review a single bidder submission, not the entire submissions. Council should be pretend, presented with all the submissions and a recommendation on what is preferred. The budget, as noted, states the cost is 50000 and in 2022 will be reviewed at budget. As was discussed in caucus, this leaves 63000 and change for next year. Expecting standard cost overruns, uh, as training is usually uh, under, underfunded, I would expect more of $100,000 to be more of an accurate term with cost overruns for the next year. The bid puts a high emphasis on Visio, a spreadsheet flowchart program that is not freeware. I do not understand the choice as there are open source products for the ability to create charts and providing charts was one of the main presentations for open.gov in the first place. Last, kudos to whomever is scanning checks for now covering the routing and account numbers. I still have an issue with scanning color documents into a black and white printer, which makes the uh, flowchart boxes almost unreadable. 
The pages being scanned are skewed as they are not fed in correctly. And as I noted a year ago, they are not scanned using OCR available by Adobe for, for, for making PDFs that will make the PDFs available for searchable and a lot easier to extract data from. This should have been handled months ago. Thank you very much, and I have a small presentation. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Coyne. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Lee Morgan. Um, the first thing I have here is 5C. I think that 5C should be given some additional consideration, and this legislation should be changed to include two trail motorcycles for the Scranton Police Department so that they can go off-road and in a lot of places that a street bike can't go to stop littering, crime, to, to do a better job in patrolling a lot of the parts of the city that really nobody goes to, whether it's, you know, places where people shouldn't be swimming or places where people discard their unwanted uh, property. And um, I think it would be a benefit to the city. Um, the other thing I have here is that I'm fairly troubled with the closure of Bancroft and even though it's a school district issue, it's a problem for the residents of the city because as we continue to diminish the educational opportunities for students and move them out of their neighborhoods, I think we do a disservice to them and our city. And I, I would just like to say that I hope that the people involved in trying to save that school would reconsider their positions um, there may be an avenue in the court to block that. I'm a truck driver, I mean, and I've, I've decided to take the Commonwealth and the governor to court. So I mean, if I can do that, I don't see why an average citizen can't do that, because I just think we need a change in this city. The other thing I think we need is, before COVID hit, I had requested that the council consider putting the home rule charter on the ballot. And I also asked the mayor that question. And as a matter of fact, I had an opportunity to talk to the mayor on Frank Andrews' radio show on WILK. And the mayor had said that she had gotten too bogged down with COVID-19 issues. And I just think that it's really time for this council and this mayor to empower the people and allow people's names to be put on the ballot, okay? Request that people who would like to be on the ballot to reconsider the Home Rule Charter, possibly changing it or doing whatever with it, should submit their names and, and move forward because I think that's the one thing that's stifling this city is working with that old charter. And I think there's solutions to our problems in a new charter with a much broader, wide open, discussion on the issues and the problems facing our city because I think the council and the mayor both would agree that we want a city that we can pass to our children and our grandchildren. There's just been too much turmoil here in this chamber and in this city where residents feel stifled and I think we could set a new agenda and a march forward for this city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Next speaker is Jack White. Mr. White, you're next to speak. Uh, hi. Um, I hope you and your families are well and safe. Uh, oh, Jack White, uh, Hill Section. Um, 
hope you and your families are safe. Uh, doctor, gentlemen, uh, um, last week I was here and I, I talked about uh, the street cleaning following the cuts that the utility companies are making. Um, I made some suggestions. Um, one of them was enforce the ordinance that uh, mandates that the uh, utilities hose down while they're cutting and after they're cutting. I suggested um, nonprofits to, to help out, uh, including the University of Scranton. I think the University of Scranton would be glad to assist. They just have to be asked to hose down. The fire company, uh, they can blast it every day, every day. And as long as these cuts are going on, uh, the streets, for health reasons, quality of life issues, uh, need to be cleaned, need to be cleaned. We're breathing it, our children are breathing it, they're hacking up their lungs every night. It's, 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 it's temporary, and I know that, and it's going to be improved, and I know that. But right now, we, we can hardly sit on our porch. So, uh, I, I, I hope something can be done. I would appreciate it. My neighbors would appreciate it. The city would appreciate it. So, uh, moving on, though. Uh, 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 where, do, where do I start? Uh, um, the, the, the noise in, in the hill, and probably the rest of Scranton, but I live in the hill. It's my neighborhood. Um, so. That's what I know. And uh, the, the noises at night, the cherry bombs, the this, the that, whatever, uh, the off-road vehicles, I'm sure the decibel levels are illegal. I did call the police the other night uh, about the noise with my dog barking under the bed. Uh, my neighbor with PTSD barking and hiding under the bed. Um, it was pretty bad, and I called, and um, I called twice because it kept on going, and the second time it stopped. I don't know if my phone call had anything to do with that, or I, I don't know what had anything to do with it. But, um, I mean, there's got to be ordinances for that, too. I don't think it takes a complaint to tell a cop that there's noise that's keeping us up. Um, but it is. I, I, don't, I don't think it, the, the dispatcher has sort of insinuated that she needed a complaint. I disagreed, we didn't lock horns, um, but that just doesn't make sense to me. If I could hear it, everybody can hear it. Um, um, just one more thing. Um, uh, on Linden and uh, Jefferson, they, the traffic light there, I don't think you have to press the button to get the little green man to come up. But when it does come up, the, the traffic stops both ways. No traffic moves. People could jaywalk. It's legal to jaywalk with all four green lights. Uh, I'm, I'm downtown a lot um, for my business and other kinds of things. and. Uh, at uh, Wyoming and Lackawanna, there is a traffic signal that you push the button, pedestrians push the button. And uh, the green light man comes up, but the traffic doesn't stop on, on Wyoming. They could make a left onto Lackawanna Avenue. I saw a lady go down the other day. Um, I, I don't know why we don't have that jaywalking traffic light. The university, well, that's city traffic, um, so it's not the university, it's the city. They have it there, uh, and I don't know if they have it other places, but they don't have it at Wyoming and uh, Lackawanna. Another dangerous situation. I'm not a very political person, uh, but I do pay attention to quality of life. I've been here a while, I'm going to stay here a while. But you know, people are leaving and people ain't coming. Oh, back to the loud noise. Uh, oh, sorry, Mr. White, you're... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Voldenberg, can you uh, check on the traffic issue that Mr. White mentioned, DPW? Thank I you. will, Mr. Gaughan. Thank you. 
Next speaker is Ron Elman. Hello, Council. This past week, I talked to 11 property owners for. Could you could you state your name for the record for the stenographer, Mr. Elman? Did I what? Could you state your name for the stenographer? Oh, Ronnie Elman. Thank you. Scranton. I talked to the uh, 11. Let me say pre-war property owners, because I don't want to call them old houses. All 11 told me they're probably paying two to three times the taxes that they, you know, over the last 10 to 20 years. How in the world with this reassessment, you, you got to quit reaching into our pockets to, to cover mismanagement from all these years. You know, assessment means to evaluate the properties and nothing else. It's, it's, it's being used for an excuse for everything under the sun. It, it, it's, it's nothing but to raise taxes, period. No other reason for a reassessment at this time, especially in a city. You know, you people, so many people in this administration seem to look down from an ivy tower at us, and, and you don't see facts and things that, like I do being out on the street and talking to people everywhere I go. The town is not doing well. Downtown, I don't know how this parking Every time I come downtown, you can find parking places all over. And I've had, I don't know, four, five, six women tell me they have no idea how to work this parking situation. I've never parked downtown, you know, to, except at the drugstore over here. But you, you expect this face to believe that we can have this 15 or 20 million dollar expense, how are we gonna collect it? It has to be paid immediately the first year of reassessment. We can't collect taxes right from people. The place is full of deadbeats, not paying taxes, not paying garbage fees. And we're gonna have, let's just say 15 million dollars, I think is what Mr. Evans said. It won't be done. What are we going to do then? Yeah. I, I heard the meeting. I saw that our, our mayor stopped her photo op and went to a meeting. And all of a sudden, I heard the word blight. You know, I've been hearing blight 25 years in this room. Nothing's done. A week ago, I told you about an abandoned trailer a block from my house. It's still there. There's a truck in front of it full of junk. I got a tractor trailer a block from my house. What would you do, Jessica, if somebody parked a tractor trailer a block from your house? I bet it'd get removed. Not, not in my neighborhood. It's in, you know. I got a, on Troop Street, a junkie, for two years, a junkie school bus sitting in a yard. I've complained and complained. Yeah, like I said, you try to phone the licensing bureau and see what you get. Well, I thank you. I think you skipped a minute on me. No? No, no, the I've been looking at it, that went real fast, didn't it? Clock was, no, I thought yeah. it went pretty slow. Not but, for you, clock. but it went fast for me. <laughs> clock Thank is, you. Clock is accurate. Thank you, Mr. Elman. That exhausts the sign-in list. Would anyone else like to uh, speak?
Norma Jeffries, uh, Scranton residence. And um, I apologize, I didn't put my name on the list because um, the questions that I have came up as you were talking, Bill, about the vacancies that are gonna be on the zoning board. And um, I wrote down the information, but then I thought um, I needed to know more information about it because I do have some names of some people that might be interested. But I wanna send them to the website. Is there some place on the website that I can send them where they talks about their length of term? What are the qualifications uh, for them to put in their um, application? If you could just let me know that. I guess this is the right time for it. I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. So the, uh, the length of term, it's four years, right? Yeah, four years. It's a four-year term. Um, there's, there's no set qualifications. You just have to be a resident of the city, as I mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, for at least a year. Um, and anyone really could apply could Is apply there anything for anything on a website that they can read about it there's as nothing far as what the duties are of being on the zoning board and how often the meetings are and anything like that yeah so there's I don't believe there's anything on the website but they do meet uh, monthly we usually have their agendas on their agendas posted in third order but they deal with zoning issues um, their meetings you could watch if you have the people uh, watch the meet some of their meetings are on YouTube to get an idea for for what their meetings are like but they'll deal with zoning issues like if a new um, let's say a new store wants to open up in a residential area and okay. they come for a variance they'll come before the board and then the board has to decide if it's the right fit for the neighborhood and and things like that so okay. it's a pretty involved uh, involved position but there's okay. no pay um, no. it's a thankless job but it's a it's a good job I'm on two boards already so uh, I know you know how it is. Uh, it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yes, to be very on the rewarding. It, re it really is. Yes. And then the, um, I wanted to start off with thanking the city, with all the paving that's going on, mm -hmm. the um, all of the markings, you know, the the crossing marks of where you're supposed to cross and everything, and um, there's a lot more paving that has to be done. I know, and um, I know myself. I picked someone up today from um, that needed to ride from the hospital. I was trying to duck the, the potholes and things because, I mean, someone just getting out of the hospital, they want to go run into the uh, potholes and all. But um, when we did get to a nice, smooth part of the city, it was very good. So I'm sure that um, as we go forward, there's going to be more and more paving uh, going on. I don't know why there were so many rocks and stones on the road today. Maybe it was the rain. But um, I just wanted to thank, as a, as a DPW or whoever takes care of the roads, that um, you know they keep up the good work, and um, I look forward to being able to continue to drive. I just had my wheel alignment done last week, and I'm sure it's out again, you know. But that's the part, part of driving in Scranton. And the second thing um, I wanted to that I wrote down, I was going to ask before, and. A few months ago, I guess the DPW sold unused or dilapidated or whatever equipment. And I know that it, it, there was a, not a flea market, but so, something like that, to sell these old uh, pieces of equipment. I know that um, that was a while ago, so I guess it happened. I was just wondering just how much money was um, gained from that. Was it, was it um, something that's appreciable, that they'll do it again? and. Um, you know, so I just need, I thought that we, the citizens of Scranton, you know, would be of interest to us if we knew the results of that uh, particular sale. Okay, I think that's all I wrote down, okay? Okay, and uh, you know, Bob Gattins would be a great person if anyone is interested that you know, and you know Bob, because you serve yeah. with him on the Recreation uh, Board. He'd be a great resource, because he's been, I think he's the most senior member on the the zoning board, so he could give you a great idea of you know what the monthly meetings look like. Yeah, because look I'm like. just trying to get more people to be yes. more involved on boards. In yeah, the we've city. had a hard time in the past uh, finding people who would want to serve on the zoning board. So if you have anyone who's interested, send them our way. Okay. Thank okay? you. Much. Thank you. And Mr. Volnberg, can you check on the uh, the sale of the vehicles that Miss Jeffries is talking about? I will, Mr. Gunn. Thank you. Next speaker. Marie Schumacher, uh, I guess I'll start where I left off last week, uh, and that was to speak on the fourth order items. Uh, I don't know how you can justify, really, 
not allowing letters to come in for fourth order as you did during the COVID because there are still citizens out there who have compromised physical bodies and don't want to come out into crowds. And I don't know why you can't continue having uh, Mr. Follenberg read them at the meetings because I think other people might also be interested in what they're, what are being requested or commented on. So I would ask that you reconsider that. Um, then I was, I was disappointed that uh, tonight that there was, a, well, like when the uh, posting came up on the agenda that there was no, uh, nothing on the resumes of the two persons who are new, uh, as had been expected last week. So this week you expect it for next week, but I hope that one doesn't, doesn't bomb out. Uh, the other thing um, is, has you changed the date of when the uh, agenda is posted in the newspaper? I looked for it yesterday and there was nothing and I didn't have time to call, call Mr. Volenberg today. So pre-pandemic, it was always posted Monday around 12 o'clock. Uh, during the pandemic, we posted it Fridays to give people enough time since we weren't going to be in the building. So we revert it back to pre-pandemic, which was Monday. So it's, it was always posted prior to the pandemic on the day, be, 24 hours before the meeting. Now that's the posting, but it was in the newspaper on Sundays and Thursdays. It, for, during the pandemic, correct, Kathy? Yes. Yes, during the pandemic. Now so, we're reverting back to the uh, advertisement schedule that we used b before the pandemic. Which is once only, and that's on Monday. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very, uh, very expensive again, to do that. I understand twice. that. Uh, I uh, also would like to comment on the overtime because it doesn't look as though it's getting the attention that it deserves. We have spent almost 60% of the annual budget in five months. And, uh, and somebody needs to look into that, which you are said you're going to do tonight. And then Lickett's Creek. Um, did I don't recall council ever following up that I don't think it was last year but the year before the that was going to be a uh, Lega Creek was going to be cleaned out and uh, some fishing group fisherman I am but came and said the timing was terrible because the fish would be spawning and you would ruin the whole year uh, and future generations of the fishes. So it was put off, but I don't recall anybody ever following up from council to see if, you know, when the spawning was over and if anything was done or if that just went by the wayside. Um, There's a, a FEMA project that is scheduled on Leggett's Creek. It's up, I think it's under the, in the area of the bridge. They're not there yet with the, with the work. I, it's detailed in the letter that'll be in third order next week. Um, I just glanced at it, but there is a FEMA-sponsored project oh, that will be okay. taking place. Yep. Okay, well, that will be good. And then I was reading the uh, Portnoff Agreement. It was finally posted online. It, th things come and go on that website. I don't know how they happen, and they're critical crashes, which aren't always at a good time. So uh, I could find nothing in there in the skimming that I did before I got on to other things, that there is any schedule for reporting to the city on how they're doing in their collections of the delinquent uh, uh, yeah, trash fees. So if you could look into that. And then I was also disappointed that there was nothing uh, that the Chamber of Commerce Mr. Durkin has not been scheduled yet now. We're almost through the month of June with next week's. Uh, will that be scheduled for the end of this month yet, do you think? Yeah, we're waiting to hear back from them, right, Mr. Voldenberg, as to a specific date, but I believe it was going to take place sometime in June or July. Okay, be, yes, because, well, I'm, I'm out of time, but I want to talk about report cards on your actions. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hopefully I get an A. 
Mr. Voldenberg, can you please uh, check with the administration for an update on the progress of Portnoff in will, their sir. collection? Thank you. Next speaker. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Uh, a few months ago, I sent you a letter on uh, parking fine that I received, and I'm happy to say it was annulled, but it wasn't easy. Uh, I had to go online and scan the tickets and scan all, all kinds of stuff and send it out to New Jersey, I think it was. And, and uh, uh, most people wouldn't have those kind of resources, or many. Uh, there's a soft underbelly of our uh, society uh, back during the pandemic. 25% of the poorest people and uh, lowest incomes in most cities uh, did not have internet that their kids could study or anything. So uh, I would wish that if we're going to spend trillions on infrastructure, we consider the people in the city that are paying $250 a month for uh, mostly volunteered services that you don't use when you incorporate with uh, uh, Comcast or somebody like that. I keep getting the ability to call China or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I, why, why would I want to call China? I'm paying somebody else's bill, is that's why. Um, <clears throat> once again, try to get your vaccine. Personally, I wouldn't be happy with hardly 95%, but there's a lot of people that are roaming around and the government left the horse out of the barn with the masks and everything else, and you're on your honor system, and some people are honorable and some people aren't. Um, that Leggett's pool, the, the lady with the pool, I mean, is there anything that could be considered to help her out and just backfill her pool? I don't know, you know? But uh, it'd be interesting to find out. Uh, and when are the trash fees coming up? Trash fees. They're, they're on your tax bill. So you're not, get, you're not getting a second bill for that. This year they moved right to your property tax bill. So it's a line on your tax, property uh -huh. tax bill now. So I'm going to get two trash fee bills, right? No. Okay. No, you're just, getting, you're just getting the one and it comes on your property tax bill now. Uh -huh. It doesn't yeah, come well, separately I as... Two, I own two properties. One has no dwellings on it. So... so it only, I also have two lots in mine and it only came on the one that I have a mm -hmm. structure on and it wasn't yeah. on the other one. So it only comes once. If it doesn't, you know, you could correct that. It's right. just a problem with our list, but. Okay. But it's well, on your property tax bill. There'll be an appeal because I want to move on to uh, voting. And uh, we have a hard nose in Congress call Congress at 202-224-3121 or 202-225-3121. And I think you can ask for specific senators not in your district. And tell Mr. Manchin and Kristen Cinema of Arizona to get off the stick. Uh, in West Virginia, 79% of the people would uh, support the uh, For the People Act, and 52% uh, would support Manchin if he would vote to end the filibuster. This is ridiculous. In Georgia, Stacey Abrams was running in uh, 2018, and uh, nine out of 11 black district uh, voting polls were closed because they were uh, not handicapped accessible. Well, I always thought that, excuse me, that's what an absentee vote is for, for people that can't make it to the voting polls. And it's, it's just crazy what they're doing. There's 14 states that have already passed repressive laws. I mean, think about it, even if you're lily white, and uh, 
uh, elderly with a crippled leg or something like that, can you stand for four hours waiting to get in the vote? Can you really do that? I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, there's some truly anti-American, anti-democratic forces in this country. They need to be stopped. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Would anyone else like to address council tonight? Mr. Voldenberg? Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman Schuster, do you have any motions or comments? Um, <clears throat> yes, I have a few comments tonight. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Voldenberg, the city inspector, and, and Mr. Eastman, um, who gave me an update on one of the residents' complaints in North Scranton. And um, in caucus, I did uh, discuss a few other citizens' requests and complaints that I'll send over to Mr. Voldenberg today. Um, one other thing, um, also I, I will be sending Mr. Voldemort to you, is uh, a request for a sign at North Fillmore and Pettibone Street. The sign is missing there, and um, residents there were afraid that uh, possibly emergency vehicles um, wouldn't know the street, so that's, uh, that's all for those. I was happy to see the, the Times editorial that um, discussed holding the utility companies accountable, so I hope that opens up a discussion for us to, to hold these um, utility companies accountable. I've seen several different things from uh, you know sidewalks uh, that have sunken in from from gas companies uh, uh, irrigation pipes things like that and uh, one thing I brought up a few months ago was the utility poles and what we're seeing is that uh, you'll notice double utility poles in areas and they're moving the wires to a new pole and the utility company isn't removing that pole and I think the city does need to hold accountable um, the companies to remove these poles once a new pole is put in because it's going to be at a cost to the city when that occurs so with that, um, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Schuster. Councilman McAndrew, any motions or comments tonight? I have a couple of comments. So they're spread over a couple of devices here, so bear with me. So uh, Mr. Voldemort, last week um, there was a resident complaint on 622 uh, South Irving. And uh, the, the person that complained um, said there has been some progress uh, with regards to you know, the quality of life issues. Uh, but he would like to have some, either some more feedback or an update, because we didn't receive um, information uh, regarding feedback from um, the Lips Department. This is, I just received it from him. So he just wants to know where, where they're at with, you know, um, they went out, who they talked to, what's going to happen. So please follow up with that. And then also I have another one. It's on my phone here. Hang on. So last year, and I do remember this, um, a gentleman reached out to me about, a garage that had a bunch of tires and, and you know you know how, how hot it's been the past couple of days it's a great breeding ground for for mosquitoes and all kinds of uh, unsanitary issues he, he did not put the um, what I noticed I just got this really um, yesterday's so he did not put the address so I mean I don't know how far back you're gonna look for it I'm gonna reach out to him I'll, I'll circle around back with you and identify the, the property and so we can take care of that because of you know the standing water issue and then um, to Mr. White. Mr. White, uh, you mentioned about the fireworks ordinance. I mean, you remember, everybody remembers last year. Last year was horrible, the spring and summer, the amount. All right, so last year it was terrible, the amount of fireworks that went on early spring all through the summer. And I remember having conversations with the chief of police, and you do need to file a complaint because, and it makes sense, because I thought the same thing too. You know, everybody should hear them, but the closer you are to them, you actually identify where the source is, where they're coming from. Because I even went, I don't know, last week at 1.30 in the morning, I woke up and, and heard some fireworks. I don't know where they were from. I don't know if they're in my alley or three streets away. So if you're in that proximity or close enough, please complain um, so they can identify the area. So that's, that's why you have to actually um, call and complain. All right? Okay. Well, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilman McAndrew. Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments? Um, yes. Uh, Mr. Voldenberg, I wanted to ask if last week uh, if there was anything sent regarding Mr. Elman's complaints about the tractor trailer, or the, the trailer that's on the street? Yes, it was sent to SPD. Okay, great. And then I'll also add in his uh, complaint tonight regarding the, uh, the trailer and the school bus. On okay. the property. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, there was a
complaint last year, last summer, uh, regarding a property along Harrison Avenue. Uh, and I know I, I get a lot of things about Harrison Avenue, but um, it's uh, next to Harrison House. It's an empty, vacant lot uh, that has, um, that's overgrown and going out like into the street, um, making it hard for people to uh, walk the sidewalk there and they often cross the street uh, to to avoid the the overgrown shrubbery um, and it's uh, once again in that in that state I believe it's 708 or 710 would be the address so if we can forward that along to uh, to lips thank you that's all thank you dr. Rothschild councilman Donahue any motions or comments uh, <coughs> Yeah, uh, I would just like to start off. I'm going to pass on some quality of life uh, issues that have been brought to my attention in South Scranton. Um, they include uh, 2024 Prospect Avenue, uh, 524 Gibbon Street, both front and rear, um, 1030 and 1031 Cedar Avenue. Um, the lot on the corner of Pittston and Maple, which is, I know is city owned, so hopefully we could get a DPW crew out there to clean that up. Um, also 2204 South Webster Ave and 1601 South Webster Ave. Um, on Thursday last week, myself and Mr. Voldenberg uh, attended a briefing uh, held by PennDOT regarding um, the bridge projects that are upcoming. Um, so first off, I'll start on North Main, the North Main Avenue Bridge and the Parker Street Bridge. Um, there will be a public meeting for each of those together on June 17th from six to eight. Uh, that's how, that will happen virtually. I'm gonna try to get, Mr. Voldenberg is gonna put a request into IT tomorrow to get the link up for uh, the design, uh, the design elements that they're, they're going to put out um, on that in preparation for that meeting. Um, these aren't going to be done simultaneously. It's going to be on North Main and Parker. It's going to be done one after the other. So first, Parker Street's going to be done. And it's not only going to be the bridge, but it's going to be a complete restoration and redesign of all of Parker Street from North Main Avenue to Boulevard Avenue. Um, and then once that's complete, then they're going to move on to the North Main Avenue Bridge, which is, which runs over Leggett's Creek. Um, this is definitely going to create a traffic issue in North Scranton because um, the detour for that project will have to go into Dixon City and then down Boulevard Avenue to Parker Street and then Parker back up to North Main. Um, and then the other ones, and so on that, Parker Street should be started spring 2023 and should finish in spring 2024. North Main Avenue will then start in spring 2024 and hopefully be completed by the summer of 2025. Um, there's also going to be uh, public meetings on the West Lac Lackawanna Avenue Bridge and Elm Street Bridge. Um, that those are going to take place on June 30th, 2021, and then from 5 to 6 for Elm Street, and then 7 to 8 for West Lackawanna Avenue. Um, and again, they'll be virtually, and those will probably won't be posted until next week, but hopefully we get that link up on the website too. Um, West Lackawanna will start in spring of 2023 and will be completed in fall of 2024 and the detour for that is expected to be just Linden Street um, up to 9th and 10th Aves going, you know, whichever way you're going there. And then Elm Street's supposed to start um, in fall of 2023 with the physical work completed in the fall of 2024. And those public meetings, you know, will happen for those on PennDOT's end um, throughout the month. Um, also, uh, just one last thing to touch on uh, last week's approval of the expansion of the Keystone Sanitary Landfill by the PA Department of Environmental Protection was absolutely disgusting and highlights the failure of state government on all levels. DEP failed in its sole mission to provide for the health and safety of its citizens, 
through a cleaner environment by once again putting the interest of a select few above the health and welfare of our entire region. This is a failure of the Wolf administration, and sadly, his, his administration's legacy will always be tainted by their failure to stand up for the long-term health and welfare of, the, of current and future citizens of Northeastern Pennsylvania. This is also a failure of our local state representatives, both former and current, who have continuously failed to adequately represent the interest of, the, of their constituents on this issue. But this fight, I don't believe, is over, and I believe the city of Scranton can and should be instrumental moving forward. Uh, to start, we must explore ways to assist in any appeals that may be filed to the DEP's decision. Um, we must also take a more aggressive approach and figure out a way to regulate and monitor uh, the leash that flows under our neighborhoods. Um, I know uh, Ms. Schumacher brought it up a couple weeks ago asking if DPW does monitor it now. We do not. Um, the problem is it's a private entity now, but we need to figure out ways where we do monitor that and we know what's flowing under you know, our, our neighborhoods and our homes. Um, landfills are a 20th century solution to waste management. But we're in the year 2021 and we should be exploring and implementing 21st century solutions to the issue of waste management. For example, to start, we need a more robust and modern recycling program on the county level that incorporates modern technology to streamline operations, but that cannot happen as long as the operator of the recycling center <coughs> and the operator of the landfill are essentially the same entity. On the city level, we must begin to explore ways to implement a, ro a robust composting program. Uh, these two initiatives do not solve the problem, but they're a start to limiting the amount of waste we send to the landfill every year. I'm also confident that this council, as well as the city's administration, as well as current and future officials of the borough of Dunmore are collectively outraged and disgusted by DEP's decision. And I'm confident that the city of Scranton and the borough of Dunmore are capable of working together to begin to chart a path forward. But we also need buy-in from county and state representatives to step up to the plate and join this fight. We must put an end to the constant cycle that is prevalent in our area of current generations selling out future generations for short-term gain. And the only way we could do that is with a united front consisting of municipal, county, state, and federal officials who are willing to say enough is enough. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dunahue. Uh, I also want to start off tonight by making a statement on uh, the recent decision by DEP to approve the landfill expansion. So it's clear, as Councilman Dunahue stated, from the DEP's decision to approve the massive expansion, I think uh, it's going to be as big as the Empire State Building, that they value the benefits of one family, one family, over the health, safety, and welfare of an entire region, tens of thousands of people. The DEP has failed every single man, woman, and child in our area and in our region, and they sold the people out. They sold future generations right down the river, and they should forever hang their heads in shame for what they did. As Councilman Dunahue noted, the fight is not over, and we will continue to stand with the Friends of Lackawanna in their noble quest to appeal this repulsive expansion and overcome the grave injustice that has been thrust upon the people of our area. It's not shocking, DEP has failed us in so many ways before. Um, I just can't believe that they would sell out the people of our region today and future generations to come. But we will continue to fight alongside Friends of Lackawanna. And a lot of the things that they have done, um, they're, the, they're really the unsung heroes of this whole situation. They have done an unbelievable job in trying their best to fight this expansion and as Councilman Dunahue noted, we will stand with them in their appeal process and do anything that we can uh, to assist. <clears throat> a couple of items I want to mention tonight regarding citizens' requests. So we get this one almost every year. 1021 Richmond, um, the Castle House as it's known. Mr. Voldenberg, I'm going to mention your name a lot tonight. Uh, neighbors are complaining the grass is overgrown badly and um, it's really a, it's become a, a blighted property. 
305 Willow Street, I did send something over to Eileen Cipriani, another blighted property in, in South Scranton with a number of issues. 901 Taylor Avenue in the Hill section, um, a dangerous tree has been marked now for, I think, two years, and a resident contacted me this morning, was wondering when it will come down. So if we can contact the city DPW and ask if there's anything they can do with that. Um, the uh, pool, uh, situation of pools in the city. So uh, we did ask what, in the last two weeks about what was happening with the pools, when they'll be open. So we did get an update today from uh, Brooke Newhart, the city of Scranton Park and Rec Recreation Director. So Weston Park and Connell Park will be open. Uh, Weston Park will be open June 21st from 12 to 6 p.m. They're gonna be opened on a rotating schedule because of trouble finding lifeguards. I spoke to the mayor this morning. This is an issue not just that's relegated to Scranton, but across Pennsylvania and the country. So the pool is gonna be open at Weston Park Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this point. Connell Park is set to open June 22nd, 12 to 6 p.m., Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, Weston Field, there is some work that has to be done at Weston Field. Mr. Preambo responded to us on that. Um, he stated that the structural maintenance requirements for the outside pool at Weston Field involve repairs of the northern outer concrete wall in the pool. A significant size of the concrete wall has collapsed. The pool has also experienced concrete scaling or flaking in many locations throughout the inner walls of the pool. Due to the nature of the collapse and spe specifically uh, and I'm sorry, specificity required in the scope of the work. We, the city DPW invited interested contractors to bid on the work. The bids are due June 10th, 2021. And if acceptable, a notice to proceed will be issued expeditiously. So hopefully uh, Weston Field can be open soon after that work has been completed. Uh, we also asked about the Novembrino splash pad, which is an exciting uh, development that's been in the works, as, as we know, for the last few years. And they can't put a definite date on it because there are still some things that have to be completed, some punch list items, but they're hoping that it will be open July of 2021. So they're closing out the project, final steps in the, last, uh, in the next three to four weeks. So that was good news. Um, as was mentioned tonight, and I've received an, an uptick in complaints, and we always do in the, in the spring and summer months about paved cuts. Um, I'd like a Mr. Voldenberger report from the DPW. We do have a paved cut inspector in the city. On the last six months of paved cuts that have been inspected and approved, where the paved cuts are located, um, whether or not the utility companies are paving these streets, and if they're holding up their their end of the bargain. Uh, we need to make sure that the city is keeping up on this. So I do want to see the records and the actual uh, permits that are being pulled and everything that goes along with this. Um, because as Mr. White mentioned and other members of council, the, the complaints are, are out of control uh, across the city. Uh, Mr. Coyne had mentioned about the searchable text, the OCR that uh, with the agenda. Um, we did have this at one point when we first got Granicus, and then something happened with the printer, and they had to switch something out, and it never got put back, and I have asked about it before. Um, it's, I think it's a little thing that goes on in the printer, but it is very helpful, especially for those who want to go back in old agendas, and instead of looking through and scrolling up and down, you just want to search it by a keyword. I like that myself. So, Mr. Voldenberg, if you can reach out to the IT department um, and see if they can reinstitute that uh, OCR program that they had on our printer. That would be very helpful. Um, Councilman Dunahue talked about a number of quality of life issues uh, tonight in South Scranton. And we, we're all, we're getting inundated with quality of life issues across, across, really across the city. A lot of it has to do with high grass. So I would like to reach out uh, Mr. Voldemort to the LIPS department and to get an idea of are, whether or not they're being proactive about this, if they're doing walkthroughs of the neighborhoods, drive-throughs of the neighborhoods, or are they just responding to complaints? Um, Ms. Cipriani was in months and months ago, and they were going to do take an eval or do an evaluation of the licensing and inspections department. So I think we need another update on on how that's going. I know they're like many other departments in the city; they are short-staffed, um, but I, I do think it would be beneficial for the council and for the citizens to get an update. Uh, on that as soon as possible. 
Um, Ms. Hodawanitz had asked a question about the Tax Claim Bureau. Um, we did, Mr. Voldenberg submitted that question or those questions, uh, Ms. Hodawanitz, to the city treasurer and she did respond. So your first question was, what is the status of the city's dispute with Lackawanna County with regard to the county's tax claim bureau policy on the collection of delinquent property taxes from city residents? Um, the city treasurer, Mary Jo Sheridan, responded, the city has an excellent rapport with the tax claim bureau treasury staff and we are in frequent contact with the team about the ordinary business of collecting delinquent taxes. Regarding the liens filed by the tax claim solicitor and the corresponding legal fees charged, the city has sent a letter to the county solicitor requesting a meeting to discuss a number of questions and concerns. And I hope that uh, they do meet and they can work that out because the, you know, this back and forth, the only people that are um, getting the short end of the stick here are the, the taxpayers and the residents of Scranton. The second question that you asked was, are city residents paying more in legal fees than they did when Northeast Revenue collected delinquent taxes? Mary Jo Sheridan responded, yes, significantly more. Under the unique fee structure that was arranged by the county and the Tax Claim Bureau solicitor, without public approval and without consulting with the city, residents are paying more in legal fees. The Tax Claim Bureau is charging residents, in addition to the $53 lien filing fee, lien legal fees of 10% of the total outstanding balance of 2019 and 2020 real estate taxes, including face penalties, interest, and previously incurred costs. NRS slash Elite Revenue, uh, they're now known as Elite Revenue Services, used to charge a flat fee of $176, which included the $53 filing fee. Portnoff and Associates, which is about to take over collections of delinquent refuse fees, charges a flat fee of $250, including the $53 filing fee. So those are in response to the questions that you asked uh, last week. Um, and the last thing I wanna mention was, and this will be in third order next week, but the mayor issued a letter to the auditor general asking for a performance audit of the single tax office. Um, and in her letter dated May 28th, which she sent to the auditor general, Timothy L. Uh, D. Four, um, she makes several uh, claims and charges uh, about the lack of accountability, uh, what she thinks is the lack of accountability of the single tax office. Um, and then she also sent a note, a memo to us um, that she, notifying us that she sent the letter uh, last month, and as well as a support letter from the Scranton School District, Scranton School Board uh, President Katie Gilmartin. Um, and she states in this that even if the Auditor General, even if the Auditor General doesn't grant the request, she will likely propose to Council and the School District that the City prepare a request for qualifications and, and to co-fund a performance audit. Um, I do think that we need to give Mr. Fox a chance to respond to these uh, claims because there's quite a few in here. Uh, one of them is lack of accountability, uh, taking cash payments, a couple different things. Um, but I support a performance audit. I don't know who wouldn't. Um, I think it makes sense. If there is anything that uh, should be changed, a performance audit will, uh, will that'll be bared out in the, in the audit. So I, I would support that. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Mr. Bolenberg. 5B for introduction, a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract between the city of Scranton and Avero Advisors to provide business process digitization support to the City of Scranton for its new operating platform. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? On the question, in, in caucus, I asked um, uh, what the reason for this service was. So. Um, Mr. Voldenberg, if we could send correspondence just asking for a clarification of what it is in this contract that uh, is not covered in the open government contract. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? I'd just like to make a few comments. So the 2021 cost of this contract, as it states in the backup, is limited to $50,000, which is funded by an Act 47 grant. Councilman Dunahue was at a Pennsylvania Economy League meeting this afternoon, and they confirmed that we did, in fact, receive that grant for $50,000. The total cost of 
this project is $113,487. And that includes, according to the, uh, the contract, all fees, labor, and a new client discount. Um, any additional work performed outside of the scope of the, f of the proposal will be billed, and then the, it, it gives you the hourly rate. For a project executive, it's $225 an hour, all the way down to $160 an hour. Um, so in the 2022 operating budget, according to Mr. Dealey, the projected cost would be $63,487. The specifics of what this company will actually do are located on page seven, and there's a, a long list um, of things that they claim that they will do. It has to do with process mapping and, and um, uh, business processes uh, in, in, different, in all the city departments. I have really two questions here. So in the RFP, it states that the contract begin, will begin May 15, 2021 and end August 15, 2021, with, an, with the option to renew the contract for up to an additional six months. So that's in the RFP. In the contract, it states that it is a one year, it's a one-year contract, and they give the dates. Uh, so I'm confused on that. Um, what what changed, and, and and why that's in the why it was in the RFP like that. So that's my first question. The second question is: This company is out of Tennessee, um, and we, the city, from the uh, a recommendation from the administration, hired and put a position in the budget called the Digital tr Transformation Specialist. The, we also hired a project manager, um, I think in the amount of $50,000. So my question would be sim very similar to Mr. Schuster's. Why can't those people who we hired, extra people in the IT department, a project manager, why can't they complete this process so we don't have to pay nearly $70,000 um, in 2022? So that would be my question uh, before final passage of this legislation. And that's all I have. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction, a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Horsepower Harley Davidson Inc for the lease of four new 2021 police package motorcycles for the City of Scranton Police Department for a period of one year from June 1, 2021 through May 31, 2022. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. On the question? On the question, uh, I believe we had the same uh, question in caucus, uh, Councilman Gahan and myself, uh, on this piece of legislation, uh, because it is only for one year, uh, the lease, and I uh, was wondering how many years our, our previous leases were for and, and why this one would only be for the one year. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? Um, yes. Uh, I, I think while we're asking some of those questions, it was brought up in public comment tonight, uh, probably an exploration of an ATV or possibly a side-by-side. -side. Um, while these questions are going on, maybe we, we ask if they've explored the possibility for an ATV to take care of some of maybe the issues that were in, in the East Mountain section last year. So just on that, because I was going to mention this, uh, but you beat me to the end of the question. I do believe the police department has a dirt bike and an ATV already. But you know, so, maybe with, so, so, with so they could use it to go investigate, you know, but with, with the ATVs and that thing, the, the problem isn't getting there, it's, it's the liability in the chase, I guess you would say. But I do believe there is at least a dirt bike. So maybe but we could look into that. Yeah, some, just some clarification. Just some clarification on that. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council number 72, 2021, authorizing the sale and issuance of the City of Scranton's General Obligation Note, series of 2021, 
and direct the incurring of non-electoral debt through the issuance of a general obligation note of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, in the principal amount of $3,210,000 for the purpose of providing funds to finance the costs of the refunding of the City's outstanding general obligation note, series of 2002, and the cost and expenses of issuing the note, stating the purpose of the project, directing the proper officers of the governor, governing body to prepare, certify, and file the required debt statement and borrowing base certificate, covenanting that the city shall include the amount of annual debt service in its budget for each fiscal year, providing for a fully registered note, interest payment dates, provisions for redemption and stated principal maturity amounts, and fixing the rate of interest on such note authorizing the proper officers of the city to contract with the bank or bank and trust company for its services as sinking fund depository, paying agent and registrar, and stating a covenant as to payment of principal and interest without deduction for certain taxes, providing for the registration, transfer and exchange of note, providing for the execution, delivery, and authentication of note, and the disposition of the proceeds thereof. Approving the form of the note, paying agents authentication certificate and assignment. Awarding such note at negotiated sale and stating that such sale is in the best financial interest of the city. Creating a sinking fund and appropriating annual amounts for the payment of debt service on the note. <clears throat> Authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city to certify and to file with the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development certified copies of the necessary proceedings. Covenanting that the pro proceeds of the note shall not be used in such a manner as to cause the note to be an arbitrage note under federal tax law provisions. Making certain representations under federal tax law provisions approving the undertaking of certain continuing disclosure, authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city to all, do all the things necessary to carry out the ordinance, authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city to pay issuance costs, repealing all inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability of provisions and stating the effective date. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of 7A. Second. On the question? On the question, I, I discussed it last week and I think it might be helpful for council. Um, during the budget process, we, um, we were told of several transactions similar to this that could help save money over the coming years. So I, I think we could request a, a list of these transactions uh, that were discussed during the budget process. and. Um, when they, they can be executed. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully <laughs> adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 172, 2021 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract between the City of Scranton and Commonwealth Energy Group, LLC, to install retrofit LED lighting. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Community, Committee on Community Development, I recommend a final vote of item 7B. Second. On the question. Um, on the question, I, I will be voting no on this contract due to the material non-disclosure uh, that was that I raised last week. Uh, that issue was the fact that Mr. Evans, who is the owner of uh, the company, did not disclose all of his campaign contributions to former Mayor Bill Courtright in the disclosures by contractors campaign finance form. Um, I take it, and I know Council takes the disclosure form, especially the campaign finance one, very seriously, and we need to make sure that. Uh, that those forms are filled out accurately. Uh, Mr. Evans did provide additional, uh, an additional document here. On his original uh, submission, 
he stated that he gave a $1,000 contribution to Bill, uh, Mayor, former Mayor Bill Courtright in 2017. The additional contributions now that we, once I questioned it last week, was $500 on uh, August 20th of 2015, $2,500 on August 15th, 2016, and $5,000 on August 15th, 2018. So that is the reason I'll be voting no. Anyone else on the question? Also on the question, um, I'll start by saying I'll also be voting no on this as well for some of the similar reasons that Mr. Gahan stated. But um, I did have a chance to take a look at the last contract that was issued in 2018-2019. Uh, and I think uh, whether this passes or fails, I think some of the questions I have might be helpful. Uh, the legislative cover sheet states that this project is to retrofit lighting in all city buildings. Number one, which city buildings is this contract referring to or this RFP referring to? The current contract with the same company goes until September of 2021. And included in that is the retrofit of three city-owned facilities, including police headquarters, DPW facility, and the Sorrenti Army Reserve Center. Question number two, are these buildings to be part of that new contract? To me, it seems that the police headquarters and the DPW facility are currently under the old contract. Um, question three is, um, if that is correct, why are we duplicating work? Um, also, there was, there was a one-year extension in that 2018 contract. But question number four, um, the contract included an investment-grade audit review that provided baseline calculations. Did the city receive the audit from that previous contract? That is all. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? I will also be voting no. I mean, mine's a procedural issue uh, with the non-disclosure. I mean, uh, a $7,000 oversight within one week is just too much for me to vote yes. Anyone else on the question? I agree with the comments made uh, regarding uh, this contract. I'll also be voting no tonight. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? No. Mr. McAndrew? No. Dr. Rothschild? No. Mr. Donahue? No. Mr. Gaughan? No. Item 7B does not pass and is not lawfully adopted. Eighth order, old business, nothing at this time. There's no further business. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.